My name is Malin, and in this video, I wanted to talk about how structure limits our potential. And I mostly thought of this through the lens of sport and my experience with soccer, but it can be applied to life in general and to all sorts of things, whatever you kind of want it to. So things that are organized is usually for ease and for use and to be spread across the masses so it's more easy to understand and for everyone to follow these set of rules to kind of fit in line and you know, fit into the world. But being boxed into kind of these ideas and these set ways of doing things can cause a lot of conflict, you know. Some people are left behind, you know, especially kids through school or through the experience of having sport. If they have like some sort of bad experience with it or something, then they're less likely to go to it. And then they have this kind of negative bias towards some things and kind of grow up just believing that they have to fit in the box and not realizing that, you know, they are unique. And as individuals, we all have different strengths and weaknesses and these things should be addressed specifically. And, you know, we are not a mass. We are not some sort of study that says 47% of people or whatever, you know, that can be quite generalized. And these things have to be taken into our own account and with our own experience and our own biases and, all these kind of things, you know, we are not some sort of median, we're not like the average amount of people, you know, and that's where these systems and these things can really limit us and hold us back in life. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're all living this life. We don't know why we're here. We don't know exactly how we got here, but we're alive and we're conscious. And that is quite amazing in, in and of itself. And you know, we think that we'd want to spend our life enjoying it, you know, being curious and following our passions and trying to live a, the best life that we could. But because of all of these systems placed on us, we kind of see the world through a certain way that we have to get a job, that we have to get married, that we have to find a house and settle down and these sorts of things, rather than experiencing the wide variety of life and finding how you want to live your life and how you would want to spend your life what your strengths or weaknesses are and what sort of life would suit you best and what sort of life would fulfill you more. And that's all really up to you to decide. And now I want to get into more specifics by using the example of sport and exercise, you know, as I said, you know, if somebody has a bad experience with sport at a young age, they're less likely to go through it. And then they spend most of their life, you know, not exercising, not doing sport. And they're missing this whole component of their life of taking care of their health, of learning how to move their body and how their body works and just having the satisfaction of, you know, being able to move your body well and having some sort of fluid movement or some sort of sport or skill that you've worked on and that you have to use and utilize. And this is kind of sad, you know, because these people just think that, oh, exercise is bad, working out is bad, you know, sports is kind of this bad kind of thing. And, you know, even for people in it, it can be very limiting. Like for me, soccer was my main sport since I was about maybe nine or 10. And in it, I tried to fit the mold, you know, fit the football mold. And, you know, you have to play the game, it's 90 minutes and you have to do these sorts of things and all this kind of thing. And it just made me try and fit the part and try and squeeze myself into this box. And I became so anxious and so and irritated and angry with myself because I couldn't fit into this system. I wouldn't play as well as other people, you know. It felt so hard for me to have a good game, to play the way that I wanted to play, the way I saw other people playing, the way I saw professionals playing. And there was this kind of like this veal, this kind of ideal placed of what it should be. And I kind of got all caught up in that without realizing oh, I'm, I'm quite good athletically, but, you know, sometimes my quick mind and my anxious mind isn't very beneficial for soccer, you know, sometimes I'm getting too stressed. And the more that I played football, it kind of got to this point where I realized, why am I working so hard and destroying my body for something that doesn't give back to me, you know? I felt like I was beating myself up all the time. I was having a lot of negative thoughts, a lot of negative kind of things come towards me and I was just having this really tired and fatigued body and I didn't feel good about myself, I didn't feel good about my life. 
and I was just trying to fit this system of soccer because I thought if I got there, if I made it, then I'd have success determined by other external people and they'd all congratulate me like, oh, great job, you've made it pro. Oh, great job, you've scored some goals. You know, you're a part of this team and you're accepted. And this is where, you know, a lot of our beliefs and our bad ideas about the world can really come out and really do nasty things to us. And, you know, we do need parts, we do need places in the world to kind of fit together and work together, you know. Like, not everyone, like in my example, can be a great sport person, you know. Because if everyone was world class, then there'd be no difference between everyone would be normal because everyone would be world class, you know. You need some people that are good at goalkeeper, some people that are good at striker, some people that are good at the wing, some people that are good at defence. And in life, you know, we need people who love farming and they want to do that and people who love to build houses and people who love to talk about philosophy and share their ideas. And we need all these different components in life. You know, we need artists, we need sports people, we need fitness enthusiasts, we need all these people. But the way that the world is set up is that we follow these paths and we think that it'll get us somewhere without realising that we're living life always in the future, always for someone else, always for all these different sorts of things to so that we can fit into life so that we can get by, so we can earn enough money to get, we'll get these things and buy all these things and all these sorts of stuff. Where at the end of the day, we're just, we're just alive and we're not, you know, like these, it's kind of like this dead end. Like nobody's doing anything for the curiosity and passion for it as much these days. You know, it's just like, oh, you know, you talk to the average person that you see every day. You're like, oh, you know, just going through my day, you know, got to work to earn some money, you know, just trying to get through. And, you know, maybe the only thing they're excited about is like a series or, you know, um, that sort of stuff. And that's, that just is kind of sad because I've lived so long like this. I've spent so much of my life doing these kind of things and it doesn't bring any sense of satisfaction. It always leaves something kind of like, oh, is there something more? Is there really something more than this? And, you know, even in sports and in these systems, when we get into them, you know, we have these weaknesses that we don't realize and we get into these patterns of thoughts. We get into these habits and we just go about our day going through these things without questioning them or seeing where all these things and ideas come from, you know. We just go to work, take the same route to work, go to university, whatever it is, take the same company, you talk to the same people, you know, and generally just go about our lives like that. And, you know, these ingrained set of patterns cause, in like, they can cause injury. So if we think about the body, if you do the same thing, over and over in a certain way, then eventually your body's going to break down or it's going to cause an injury because, you know, there's a holistic perspective. It's not just one movement. It's a whole range of movements. It's a whole body moving. It's a whole system of things that go together. It's not just your work. It's your social life. It's how you spend your day, how you rest, how you keep active, how you take care of your body, what you eat, how you eat, how you talk to the people, you know, it's, this huge perspective and once we get into the structure you know we just get an ingrained habit we just go about our things kind of in this almost robotic kind of fashion and all these hidden weaknesses you know like like it's just like an injury waiting to happen you know like if you have some sort of ingrained set of way of running or something and i'm going to use the example of me so I often had a lot of shin splints and a lot of calf pain. I just get really bad calf pain. And it was because I was using my feet so much more to move. I was using my, you can hear my, I'm not sure if you could hear that, but my calves were clicking because I was just making the movements. But what I'm trying to say is that all of the pressure and the force was going through my, the front of my shin, through the tibialis anterior and through like the soleus, because I have re really good flexibility with my ankle, you know, but all of the pressure would be going onto that, that calf muscle 
and then it'd be pushing up and doing most of the work rather than you know like my legs running and that kind of like not my legs my quads or my hamstrings doing more of the work and my hip flexors and that to help drive and move the whole leg so it moves as a system as a fluid system and what I'm trying to talk about with structure is that as individuals we are unique we have our own strengths and weaknesses and we should come to understand that and these things should be addressed not everyone should be taught the same way not everyone should be taught the same things not everyone needs the same sort of sport the same sort of set regime because everyone's an individual and we need to you know build up some of our weaknesses you know like for me i was very bad socially for so long and through just working at a cafe and being forced to speak to people more and more i have built that skill up more where i'm i'm enough to like get by but i'm not i'm not great at it by any means and we don't really learn like these kind of skills in school or in sport or anything you know our mindset our mentality you know how we should think about these things you know are there bigger things than winning like i talked about in the winning fallacy kind of video and you know with my example of sports and exercise it's important because health is king you know there's like a duty for us to take care of our bodies because some of the anxiety some of the the stress that we're feeling and the negative thoughts and that come from us just not taking proper care of our body and our body kind of making these signals like hey you're not really taking care of us you know we're feeling really bad and i'm not saying that just exercise and that kind of thing and that just doing whatever you feel like is going to be the best way to live but i'm trying to say that at the end of the day we're unique we have our own strengths and weaknesses like i keep saying and we should be addressing that and accepting that we're all unique we all have our own perspectives and our own th things that need to be improved or worked upon and we all have our own strengths that are good for certain areas and certain jobs in certain kind of things and that and you know in this kind of structured life we aren't really taught how to deal with these differences how to really take care of ourselves and find a, a way for ourselves and for others as well and how we can fit into the world so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video